Hello and welcome to the August 3, 2, 1, where I talk about three patterns, two designers, and one yarn that I am loving this month. And so I also look at this gorgeous mug. Oh, it is just absolutely beautiful. I got this mug <laughs> today and I was on a bike ride yesterday and I happened to stumble upon this adorable little art festival in a town very close to where I live. And so I, I of course had to stop. Part of me was like, oh, maybe there is like a local, what do you call it? A local shepherd or someone that would be selling wool or that. Oh, I found this gorgeous potter which is Root Cellar Studios, I believe. Yes, so this local potter who is Root Cellar Studios was at this adorable little art fair and I, I loved this little motif. Absolutely love this little flower motif. And so since I was on my bike ride, I just didn't think that bringing home a beautiful handcrafted mug would be a smart idea. And so thankfully <laughs> the uh, artist lives right around the corner from where I live so we met up this morning and I bought this beautiful little mug from her and I think it is going to be my new favorite mug but let's get into the 321 and so last time I posted this video it was the first time I ever posted it and I got so much wonderful positive feedback and just I was a disclaimer I was saying the word Deutsch Deutsch, something like that, but I meant to say, be saying Deutsch, which is German. So apologies for mispronouncing Deutsch and calling it like a weird version of Dutch, but Nitharina post patterns in English and German or English and Deutsch. So let's get started with this month's patterns. So three patterns I am loving. The first pattern I am loving is the one that's on my head. So this is the Romanticist's Bandana, and this is a pattern that is made by Meredith Campbell. And if you watch High Fiber Knits, you will have seen that she also knit this bandana. And after watching her podcast, I was like, that is adorable. And I think that both Emily and I have like big curly hair. And so bandanas look amazing on her. I was like, I want to knit one for myself. And I actually used Hobbies, Friends, Cotton, 8-4, just the way she did. And this yarn was actually gifted to me by Emily, so thank you. And I just, I think this is such an adorable little motif. It is super simple. I am definitely <laughs> going to knit more of them. I have some blue bamboo yarn that I'm planning to make another one out of, but I think that this is just the super, most adorable, super cute little summer knit that knits up I think I knit this in, I knit it basically in an evening. I did do the finishing I cord the following night or the following day, but super cute. I think it's super wearable. I surprisingly have a lot of green in my wardrobe, which this bandana has made me wear all the green. Speaking of which, I am wearing my camisole number five, which is a pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear. You probably know it. I knit this in a sport weight superwash merino that I got from Fiber and Fleece, which is a yarn distributor in Kingston, and I yarn chickened so it's cropped, but it does, it fits just above high-waisted jeans or high-waisted shorts, pants, whatever, and I don't mind wearing it in the summer, and I thought it looked super cute with this green bandana, so this is the first pattern that I'm loving, and I would love to just read you the description. So it says, the Romanticist's Bandana is a quick stash-busting project for anyone looking to add a little whimsy to their accessory wardrobe. It's constructed by casting on at the point of the bandana and increasing on either side while simultaneously working a delicate little diamond motif. It is written for one size, but you can easily adjust the size of the bandana by adding more or fewer number of uh, diamond little lace motifs. but yeah it honestly flies by and i think it is super cute and it is 
it is it is a paid for pattern um it is under five dollars canadian so very affordable and i know i'm definitely going to be getting more of these i already have plans to do a few gift knits with this bandana because i think it's super cute it's a great way to use up those random scraps of summer yarns and romanticist bandana isn't it at a dk weight although i honestly think that you could knit it at any weight um i held like a heavy fingering held together and i knit this one on five millimeter needles i believe the pattern calls for 3.75 millimeter needles, but you know, as long as the yarn works with your needle size, I think that you can knit whatever, you can, you can do fingering at like a 3.5 or 3.25 or three millimeter needles. You'd probably just have to add a few more repeats. You can knit it at a larger size and add fewer repeats, but a great pattern. It's designed for DK, but I knit this at, I'd say more of like a worsted weight um, and I can't wait to knit more. Okay, so. Pattern number two is a free pattern, and this is the Macaron Cardigan by Espace Tricot, which is a yarn shop and a designer based out of Montreal, Canada. And this cardigan is super cute. It is it kind of reminds me of the April cardigan, which <laughs> if you've watched my podcast, you've seen that it is on my needles and this cardigan is a raglan style. It has ribbed cuffs and a ribbed hem. Yeah, it's just a nice basic cardigan. It is knitted, held, or it is knit using a light fingering and a lace to achieve like a DK weight. It is knit, I assume, body on four millimeter needles, just like the April cardigan. And the um, ribbed and cuff is on three millimeters, it looks like. And so, the sizes for this range from a 43.75 inch bust or inch finished size to a 68 inch finished size. And there are, sorry, there are nine sizes available. So it's size inclusive. It covers your full size range. It's free. Um, unlike the April cardigan, there are there are five buttons instead of four buttons and of course the ribbing and stuff is shorter. The sleeves for the Macaron cardigan also appear to be a bit more balloon style than the April cardigan but a very cute simple cardigan that I think would be a nice timeless piece and a nice great fall addition to your wardrobe this uh, coming fall and winter. If you're feeling anything like me you're probably also feeling the dread of finishing up your summer projects but I only have two and to me this little bandana is like the perfect size summer garment to just fly off your needles and use some of that summer fiber up. I'm definitely craving more wooly warmer knits despite it still being quite hot out um, but I think this cardigan is is a great simple cardigan that you can add to your wardrobe and the fact that it's free is awesome and I mean you can always extend the ribbing on both the hem of the sweater and the cuffs to make it similar to the April cardigan as well as increase the rate of decreases in the sleeve so that you get less of a balloon style and more of that tapered look like the April cardigan has but I mean petite knit is wonderful but I think that this cardigan is a great alternative and it's free if you're on a budget. <laughs> okay, so the last pattern that I want to talk about is the Summer Girl Socks by Sari Nordlin. And if you've watched my stash tour video, I talked on and on about how I think like half the amount of yarns in my sock stash would look super cute as summer girls socks. They're these cute little stockinette socks with a little ruffle. I think that they would look super cute with loafers or low top running shoes, Mary Janes, like a flat. I think they would just look adorable with a whole bunch of different shoes. I think that they're a nice feminine edge. Um, I don't know. I, I think Petite Knit also has a ruffle sock pattern that I wanted to cast on and I haven't, but the Sari Nordlin ones, as I mentioned, I haven't finished the June sock, but this August sock is amazing. So I should say that this sock is part of Sari Nordlin's summer sock knit along. So for the past few years, Sari Nordlin has been coming out with socks every month, June, July, August, and September. So the four months of summer. 
and each month gets a new pattern for the first three months, June, July, and August, you use, you know, brand new skeins or whatever. And then that fourth month of September is a colorwork sock that incorporates the leftovers from each of your three previous month socks. So I definitely want to knit these socks. I have actually bought the pattern, so very excited to cast them on, but trying to get through a few of my summer knits that I have left before I cast these on. Sorry Nordlin also has a discount code. If you use the code Summer Sock Cal, you can get 25 excuse you Luna. You can get 25% off the pattern, which, you know, sock her sock patterns are a regular price with the discount code. They're under five dollars. So super cute. I definitely think that these could fit I would probably knit them year after year. I've been drawn to ruffle socks for a long time. I don't know, they kind of remind me of being like a little girl and having like a cute little white ruffle sock. I'm planning on knitting them in a variety of different colors, but I think they're cute. And I think that, you know, compared to some of Sari's other sock patterns, they're quite toned down. And I just think that it would be a nice way to show off your hand knit on wearing an outfit that maybe doesn't have a knit garment or something in it. Um, I know in May I wanted to do a whole bunch of socks. I wanted every day to be a knit day. Um, I have not succeeded well on that goal, but I think that these are super cute and definitely want to knit myself a pair. Yeah, so that is the third pattern I'm loving. Um, I think just as a little aside that for the patterns, I am going to try to have a mix of garments and accessories for every month because I know, you know, at least accessories are size inclusive for everyone and I think that sometimes garments can feel a little intimidating but like a little kerchief that you can knit over a weekend, over a night, over, you know, slowly pick it up whenever, a pair of socks, like they're just great patterns that can fit a whole bunch of different people in your life um, as well as a whole bunch of different bodies. So I'm gonna try to include some accessories as well as some garments that I'm loving and try to have a mix of paid and free patterns. So, okay, moving on to two designers that have caught my eye this month. The first designer that I would like to mention is Alexandra Solowianiux. Solowianiux. Solowianiuk, Alexandra Solowianuk, who is Virgin Rose. And I find her patterns are just absolutely gorgeous. They definitely have a very feminine flair to them. Um, and a lot of them are just like a nice play on a simple garment, but with like a bit of a more delicate feminine touch to it. And so I, all of her patterns are also size inclusive, I believe, and they have a full size range. All of her patterns have the nine size range. They go from an 80 centimeter bust up to an 160 centimeter bust. The one pattern that drew me into this designer was the Juzia sweater, which is her recent publication. And it is this gorgeous raglan style with a delicate rate uh, with a delicate lace and scallop design along the sleeve um this sweater came to me through a femka who is neepy makes i believe here on youtube and she tested this sweater and it looked absolutely gorgeous i thought it would be such a nice take on a simple raglan but adding just that extra little detail on the sleeve i think is just super cute super feminine um she has a variety of patterns she does a decent number of garments, mostly cardigans and sweaters, uh, but she also does have a couple sock patterns and uh, fingerless knit patterns. So I will insert a photo here of all of her patterns that are on Ravelry. So these are all the patterns that are available on Ravelry. She is on Instagram at vert.ann.rose. And yeah, they're just gorgeous, feminine, and I would love to knit one at some point. Right now, the one that is catching my eye the most is the Juzia sweater. Hmm, but maybe also a pair of socks. The Molina socks look quite cute. I like that the back is relatively simple and that they have this nice, beautiful motif that runs through the front of the foot. The, I also love her Mauricia sock, which is a ribbed sock with like these little details on it and it has like a little Pico edge cuff. 
super cute, super feminine, yet also quite simple. Um, I did do a pair of socks with eyelets in them and I just found that the need to do something different every like four or five rows made the socks fly by compared to just like a totally plain vanilla sock. And so I feel like these can be a great elevated simple sock and I really love the detail of the pico edge on the cuff. So I would definitely suggest checking her out. She has a lot of great patterns and again has a variety of patterns, both garments and accessories. The second designer that I would like to feature this month is Winter's Weather Knits and so her name is Joey and I believe she is also a Canadian so trying to support our other Canadian makers and designers and I don't know with fall closely around the corner I have been looking at cardigan and sweater patterns that I want to knit to help use up some of the stash that I have and Joey's patterns she has 46 published patterns on Ravelry there are a variety of different patterns available she categorizes them by body, so sweaters, cardigans, tops, neck, which I believe, you know, cowls, shawls, scarves, anything that has to be <laughs> around your neck is where those patterns are. She also has feet, so she has six different sock patterns ranging from relatively simple socks with just a nice rib to color work socks to some nice like cable more fancy textured socks so there's a little bit of everything and then she also does offer four free patterns she has the self-isolation socks which is just basically a vanilla sock um, she has the high road headband she has a throwback scrunchie and then she also has the friday beanie for a nice twisted rib beanie but there are four free patterns if you wanted to check out one of her patterns and knit a fall slash winter accessory this upcoming fall season that would be super awesome um, so i think it's beautiful her sizes again have a full size range from extra small to 5xl so that is awesome and so her patterns go from about like an 80 centimeter bust all the way up to an 160 centimeter bust and of course you can pick the size that best corresponds to the amount of ease that you want to have those are my two designers virgin rose or alexandra and winter's weather knits who is joey okay and last but not least the one yarn i am loving this month is called pika pika and it's by moondrake co and so when I was in Toronto last month, I met up with Emily from High Fiber Knits at the Knitting Loft and I was talking to Rebecca, who I believe is the shop owner of the Knitting Loft, and she, I, so I had the Theodore Bralette, which I've since made and I did not buy this yarn for it because it was a little bit out of my price point to buy two skeins of it. but. The yarn, one of the yarns she suggested to hold double was this Pika Pika yarn and it is super soft. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, there was like a neon pink colorway. I'll put a picture here. And I was like, oh, the pink was calling me. But my wallet was like, girl, you bought a lot of yarn recently and we're not spending $90 on a summer top that you are probably only gonna wear to the beach and maybe over some cute tops. So. As much as I wanted to buy it, I definitely did not, but I would love to buy a skein at some point. I think it is such a unique yarn. And so, okay, let me just read you the description of this yarn. Pika Pika means sparkling in Japanese. It is the perfect description of this yarn. The content of silk and rami, which is a luxurious plant fiber, bring a subtle soft sheen and great drape to the knitted fabric. And it is perfect for spring and summer projects. So the composition of this yarn is 60% superwash merino, 20% silk, and 20% rami. So I know that we are transitioning into fall, but I think that a wool plant-based fiber is a great year-round fiber to knit with. I know I would love to knit a couple garments this fall that 
are in a like merino cotton blend or merino silk blend because I think that they'll be great to wear during the fall. They have some memory, but I also can get a bit more wear to them than in a 100% wool piece or in a 100% plant fiber piece. But I just think that this would be a great piece to help kind of transition you into, or a great piece, a great yarn to help transition you into fall knitting. Um, I could see it looking absolutely amazing in some of those like mock neck tank tops. Um, I know Ulla Knitwear has one coming out and then there's also one that I want Lily Kate knits. I can put the two pictures of them here, but I think that it would just be a great fiber choice for one of those garments. Um, just with the high neck, you know, it kind of is less summery and more fall. I think that the mock neck is, yeah, just a great piece. And so I think this would be a great transition fiber to kind of bring you from summer into fall. Um, and the colorways are super fun and bright. They don't have a lot of true neutrals, but they have a lot of bright colors and some pastel colors. They have a beautiful orange. If you are planning to do something with this predicted orange trend, um, I think this could be a fun yarn to knit. A transitional piece um, as well as Put a lot of time and effort into a fingering weight garment and then have it be able to wear year round. So that's it for my August 321. Let me know if you've knit one of these patterns, if you've knit a pattern from one of the designers I've mentioned, or if you've knit with Pika Pika. I am so intrigued to know if you have and what your experience was like. Thank you for all the wonderful warm love, the wonderful feedback, and if you are still here watching, you must like what you see. It would mean so much if you liked and subscribed. I, It's been so crazy to watch this channel grow and just meet all you wonderful people. So I guess meet, like, you know, connect with you over YouTube comments and Instagram, and I can't wait to see what the knitting online world has for me this upcoming fall. So thank you so much. Until next time. See ya.